Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Danny here today. I'm talking to you about Shoujo Kishidan Night Tale. So the Night Tale for short is written and drawn by Shinsuke Inoue. This was published in Dengeki G's comic. And this magazine mainly focuses on waifu mangas. This is a monthly magazine and this was published in April of 2016 and ended December of 2017 with a total of 19 chapters. And this is another case of a manga being cancelled pretty early in its run. But there's more to the story than just that. After Volume 3 came out, the magazine decided that they wanted to end publication for the series. And Inoue didn't really want to let go of the series. The plan after that for Inoue was he was going to move the series to Sayomi, which is Sai Games manga app. And that was going to be in 2018. But there was no news for about two years did some digging on his Twitter, and turns out in 2020, he officially announced that the series also got canceled there. And he is now planning to self-publish the series, either through Fanbox on Pixiv, on Twitter, whatever other platform he could do for self-publishing. He's doing research for it, I guess. And he promised at the end of 2020, but as we're almost at the end of 2021, there's still nothing for it. And seeing what else he has done, we can see that, oh, this guy also was big in doing hentai. And after the gap between the cancellation and the announcement that it wasn't moving to the app, he was hitting hard in the doujin industry. And he's just been doing that ever since. So hopefully sometime next year we'll see a continuation because I would like to see one. This feels like an average manga, but it's unique in its own way. So let's go ahead and dive into the series, man. The Night Tale starts off with our main supporting character, Shinobu, who is a timid high school girl being molested on a train. The guy behind her is copping a feel, and because she is timid and super nervous, she doesn't know what to do. But today's different. She is reading her favorite genre, which is Night's. And so that's trying to give her the confidence, but she's still being intimidated by the guy, you know, wishing that a knight could come and save her. That's exactly what happens. We see a knight in the middle of a public train in Japan stop this guy from copping a feel, chases him down, subdues him. Then they both get sent to the police department for questioning. And as the knight takes off the helmet, we find out that it is also another high school girl who goes by Kasugai. And she got lost. And was just trying to find her way back to St. Agrippina, which is an all-girls academy. Main reason because they have a club for, I believe the term was, close hardcore combat. And the best way to explain what it is, if you've seen those Russian videos on YouTube of people in full knight's armor just duking it out in a cage, that's exactly what this is. So it's a sports manga with all ladies. And the first thing I thought of, I'm like, oh, hey, it's kind of like Bamboo Blade then, right? Because, you know, that was also an all-girls school sports manga about uh, Kendo. But here we're talking about knights. And Kasugaya being the main character, she has to stand out the most. So she is 100% into the knight persona, talking about chivalry. Even the way she talks sounds sort of like old English. And it's all just great. Super straightforward character. And she can have her comical moments. And the reason they're comical is because she doesn't intend them to be. And that's always the nice type of humor. And we get to see some combat in the first few chapters here setting up our world. And as she is better and was able to pass the qualifications for the test, she gets rejected because she is known as a crest list. And now there's like this whole world building when it comes to the world of close hardcore combat, or whatever it's called, that's all about representing a crest, just like knights do back in the medieval times, but she descends from people who are crestless, who betrayed the round table, as it's called, and so they decided to not let her in, and eventually somebody else shows up who is a high ranker when it comes to these uh, tournaments, and takes her into her school, and so now we're going through the journey of an all-girls combat manga. Now, as much as I like the manga, there are some faults, though. The writing 
is as standard as it is when it comes to a sports series and also when it comes to an all-female cast. It pulls the same tropes from a lot of other mangas, so there's really nothing that stands out. You're really reading this manga for the personalities you like for the characters, and they're all very obvious when they show up based on their designs, right? So you can expect what you can expect when you dive in. But what really kept me interested was the fact that it's about medieval combat and knights in armor. And, you know, I was thinking the other day, too, of how oh, there's another sports manga coming out. It's like, well, how different can they really get from everything else that's come out? That's always been the big thing for me for sports mangas and why I don't really dive in deep to them. Unless they get ridiculous like I Show 21 or they're just amazing like Slam Dunk. But here, the nice catch is because they're knights... It's not the same layout every time. We all have different weapons. Our main character uses a broadsword, which is a two-handed sword. And then we get somebody that uses a sword and shield. You get someone with a mace. You get someone with a long sphere. By having that aspect of you don't know what your opponent's going to have until you get into the field, there's potential for so many interesting fights that go on there. It just really sucked that it ended at the end of the first round with our characters because I would like to see more. There was some buildup of recurring characters from Kasugai's past, getting more lore about what the Crestless is about, maybe some backstories into why they left the round table. That was also another thing that was going to be pulling me in more if we would have got some of that stuff, because it's different. But it's unfortunate that we had this series get canceled when I was reading the Scanlations. I think the Scan leaders were saying that it had poor sales for the first volume, so make sure you go support. And that is the big factor when it comes to a series. It's the low ratings in the magazine. And then the real test is, well, if we put the volumes out, are they going to do good? And I believe it said it didn't do good, so that's why you get the axe. And that's always unfortunate to hear. So hopefully soon, Inoue could come back and and dive more into this series, get more with our characters. That would be a fun time. So even though it got canceled and it's short, I still recommend checking this one out. And going through Inoue's Twitter, you could tell he's got big passion for this medieval combat. And with that, that's all I really have to say today, guys. Thanks for swinging by, checking us out. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, have you read this manga? Would love to hear some feedback. You could send those to unversepodcast at gmail.com. And we'll be sure to bring those up on the next episode. And then you could follow us anywhere on social media at unversepodcast anywhere you go. And we'll let you know when those episodes drop. So thanks again, guys. And we will catch you on the next one. 